and we got a preacher with us, and I love this dear man. He's been a missionary to the military for a number of years and just done a, just did a great job. Pray with them as they have uh, just a missionary little highlight. Yokosuka Baptist Church, kind of in a similar situation to us that they have the opportunity to buy the building that they're in, but they're not necessarily situated as maybe uh, they would like to be. And so they're seeking the will of the Lord there and, and should they, you know, move a little bit further from the base with a better building or what to do there. A lot of, you know, a lot of uh, decisions to be made. And so uh, we need to make sure and pray for them. Let's, let, let's just highlight the Pinson family this week as our, military, as our missionaries of the week. And there they are. And <laughs> they've been a real blessing. But let's pray for them this evening, especially, uh, particularly, uh, two, re- two things. Number one, that God will help them with the building situation. And number two, Pastor Pinson will be meeting with the chaplain this coming week? Here soon. Okay, so here's going to be mis- meeting with him you know, soon to talk about uh, different things and stuff. And, they, and he needs that meeting to go well. So let's, uh, let's pray for them with regards to that. And I'm going to ask Brother Blue this evening, if you don't mind, would you pray for the Pinsons? Let's pray. Amen. Amen. We'll be sure and pray for the Pensons all week this week. Well, without further ado, my dear brother, come on up and preach the word of God to us one last time. Amen. Amen, brother. Thanks, sir. Amen, brother. Appreciate it, preacher. Thank you so much. Well, praise the Lord. Daja boo. I'm not saying no more Japanese words because Miss Lucy, she told me today I wasn't saying them right, so I ain't saying no more. Amen. I'm going to South Africa, hopefully, in um, January, preach again for the 13th, 14th. Been there several times. Looking forward to going there again and singing Zulu there. Now, Lucy don't like that either, amen, because she is Zulu, amen. But I, I sing the way the Lord told me to sing. The Bible doesn't say to sing on tune. It says sing a joyful noise, amen. The Bible says let the redeemed of the Lord say so, amen, amen. amen. I can't wait till I get in the heavenly choir. We'll all be the same up there, amen, in the heavenly choir, amen. And um, I know when the Lord made me, he didn't give me any musical talents, but he gave it to my wife and my family, amen. I appreciate them, you know. Thank you for playing that. Where would she go to? Oh, my. If she could hear me, I appreciate her playing the piano, amen. amen. My little girl played the piano, and she, she plays and everything. It's always a blessing to see that as well, too, and thank God for that. Well, what a week. Man, what a week. And what we saw God do this week was a blessing. And I just enjoyed being here and just being around your pastor and his family and so forth. Um, Don't take him for granted, folks. Amen. Love on them. Take care of them. Bless them. Bless their socks off. Amen. Well, just take care of them, you know, and just uh, let them know that you appreciate them and so forth. And just work, work out. And I tell you, it sure is a... Uh, a blessing, and when you go, when you PCS and go back to the States, it's a different world back there as far as trying to find the closeness that you have in a military ministry. Uh, military churches are just special because we have all, we normally have one thing in common. We are separated from our families. You know, and of course, we know the pastor's wife, her, her family is here, amen, and that's unusually, that's not normal, and, uh, but her family's here, and um, the, um, but everybody else's family normally is gone back to the stateside somewhere. And so uh, it sure is a blessing to be in the military ministry and so forth and uh, working with people. Um, tonight, um, I wanted to preach out of the book of Acts, chapter number one um, in your Bibles. If you've got time to open up your Bible, Acts chapter number one, we're going to preach out of Acts chapter number one. Now, Sunday night, Pastor McKentrick said 
it's just family night and just sit back and enjoy a T-bone steak, salad bar, dessert bar, a cup of coffee afterwards. So I'm just going to take it easy tonight, and I'm not going to be rushed by the clock. You all got school tomorrow? Oh, praise the Lord on that, amen. Amen, praise the Lord on that, amen. And uh, so, anyways, Acts chapter 1, if you've got your place in the scriptures, let's all stand for the reading of God's word, Acts chapter number 1. <clears throat> the Bible says, and I'm so glad that we can say the Bible says, amen. amen. We didn't discover the Bible, it was delivered to us. God gave us his word. Chapter number 1, verse number 1, the Bible says, the former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Under the day in which he was taken up, after that he thought through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you have baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days since. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? He said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power. But you shall receive power that the Holy Ghost come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and in the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Verse 10, And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, You men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. I'm going to preach tonight out of this text here why I am committed to missions. Now this morning, you made a commitment by the grace of God, by your faith promise that you are going to commit to a year to help support the missionaries and missionary projects out of the Kuska, no, Yukoda Baptist Church. Amen. Down there at Yukuska, sometimes my assistant gets up in the pulpit. I don't know. He just says Yukoda all the time. So I said, brother, you ought to just say YBC. Amen. You say YBC, you'll be all right. Amen. Amen. But uh, trying to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ right here in this community, and also around the world. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray you bless the reading of thy word. Thank you for the Bible. We ask this now in Jesus' name, Lord, and amen. You may be seated, please, and thank you for standing for the reading of God's word. Um, now, why am I committed to missions, and why should you be committed to missions? I want to say a couple things. First of all, there at Yukuska, what we do with our faith promise giving and I don't know how you all do it here and so forth, how your pastor does it, but I just want to tell you how we do it so you can at least hear from different churches. We uh, take up a faith promise, and we do the 70-10-10-10 plan with the faith promise. What that means is 70% of what comes in goes to the missionaries. 10% goes to the mission conference. Because normally when you have a missions conference overseas, you've got to pay for someone to come overseas to do that, Okay. And then you also, 10% of special projects. I mean, we had one missionary in Germany. He was driving down the road and his transmission broke. So we had some money in the missions to help him with that. I remember Dr. Alverson was driving one day in the States, and he called up and said, hey, Brother Pinson. He said, our, our transmission also broke. So we had some money to send him to help him get his transmission fixed. And sometimes missionaries, they have special needs that come up just like you do. You know, uh, when you have emergency, when you have a death in the family, what does the military do for you? You got emergency leave. They get you on the plane as fast as you can. Uh, if you're not in the military, and you try to do that, the tickets can go pretty high up. Amen. So just sometimes missionaries have special needs. Okay. And then also the other 10% we use to go on mission trips. I can't tell you how many times 
in Germany and Belgium, I would take men from our church and we would go to mission trips. We would go to South Africa. I took three or four guys there, three times, almost three times there, and I took them there. And when they go there and they see the mission field, I got several men in the ministry now all over the world because they got to go to the mission field and see what goes on. Amen. We went to Romania, Russia several times and so forth. But I'm just trying to say to you is that uh, your, your faith promise is all about getting the gospel out and, and reaching people with the word of Jesus, with the world of Jesus Christ. And so with that thought, we're going to preach some things here on why am I committed to missions. First of all, committed. What does the word committed mean? It means to do, to effect, or perpetuate, to engage, to pledge, to pledge by implications, to act in such a manner as to bind oneself to a certain line of conduct. I like that one there. You know, if I'm committed to something, I'm doing it, I'm engaged in it, and it is seen in my conduct. Whatever you are committed to, you are doing it, okay? There are a lot of things that we say we are committed to, but you will never know it by our actions, amen? I mean, if you're committed to missions, you're going to be committed because, again, it's, it's a way of life. It's how you live your life. And, you know, when you fall in love with Jesus and you're thankful he saved you, I mean, you're willing to do anything, whatever he wants you to do. You have a grateful, thankful heart about you and everything. So what, what a blessing. So are you committed? Are you engaged in doing that? You know, and, and the way you live, you're, you're not going to plan things around. You're going to make sure your calendar, when it comes to time to come to the house of God, you're going to be here, amen? Uh, your kids should not wake up on Sunday morning and say, uh, are we going to church? no. It should be automatic in their mind. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I remember one guy said, yeah, when I was younger, I was drugged. I said, what do you mean you were drugged? Yeah, I was drugged to church Sunday morning, Sunday night and Wednesday night. Well, praise the Lord, amen. And so he was, he was saying that in a, in a negative way. I said, let me ask you a question. When you were younger also, you say your parents drug you to church. Did they drug you? Did they drag you to the supper table? And feed you every day? No. You know? I mean, your parents took care of you. And God bless you. It's more, there's more things of raising kids than putting a house over them and giving them food. You got that spiritual aspect that you got to bring in God. Amen? That God has to be incorporated in their lives. Amen? You know, there's a whole lot more than that. So are you committed? Number one. And then missions. Missions is not charity or community work. I mean, there are some people that have signs on the sides of the road, and they say, such and such is picking up trash. One old preacher got a phone call one day at his church, and they said, preacher, what are you doing in the community? We don't see your church sign on the side of the road saying, you're picking up trash. He said, God didn't call me to pick up trash. God called me to preach the gospel, amen? He said, by the way, I saw you know, we had a drunkard get saved last week, Amen. He got saved by the grace of God, and that drunkard that used to be a drunkard and spend his paycheck at the bar, now he comes to church and with his family all the time. Amen? Amen. Now, by the way, it's not wrong picking up trash, amen? You know? Of course, now I grew up in West Virginia. We didn't believe picking up trash, amen? Amen? We believe in throwing trash, amen? You know? That's just the way I grew up, amen? You know? Uh, We used to change our oil there in West Virginia. We used to pull the plug off, and lay it on the ground, and keep on going, amen? You know, that's the way we grew up. Our, we had dirt roads growing up. We had outhouses not too far from us, amen? Not indoor plumbing, plumbing what that means, amen? You know? And uh, uh, my dad would just, I, I, I just, we didn't have no seatbelts growing up, amen? We'd get back in the pickup truck, four or five of us, eight of us, and ride to town 10 or 15 miles, with no, no seatbelts. I know some of you all say, oh, my. That's the way I grew up, amen. You know, I grew up with shotguns in the back of the pickup truck loaded. Amen. You know what I mean on that, brother? You follow me on that, amen. You know what I'm saying, you know? I mean, nowadays, I mean, I didn't touch, I never touched the guns, you know? I mean, it was, it, I, I, just, I just don't understand nowadays uh, how people do things and how they think. God bless them, Amen. You know, so mission is not just doing 
charity work or community work. And by the way, it's not wrong to do community work. I'm not saying that. I am saying, though, if we're committed to missions, that's not the most important thing. Souls are the most important thing. Amen? All right? Missions is not just going soul winning. It is, but not the whole thing. Missions is evangelizing the whole world. Missions is planting independent Baptist soul winning churches worldwide. If you are committed to missions, you are engaged in and involved in world evangelization. Amen? So what I'm going to say is it's important for us to understand when it comes down to being committed to missions. You know, and, and by the way, someone right here tonight, God may be calling you in the missions. God may be calling you to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And no greater, no greater thing you can do, amen, is to step back and, and, and preach the gospel and see people, God change their lives and make a difference for the Lord, amen. So I'm going to give you three points tonight, three points tonight about are you committed to missions and why I am. Number one, I'm committed because the commitment of my Savior, Jesus Christ, he was committed to us. Number, uh, first of all, what you see here is that he is coming to suffer. Open your Bible to John chapter 3, please. One book back here in John chapter 3. The Gospel of John chapter number 3. Look at verse number 17. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be what? Saved, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. Open your Bible to chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians, please. Chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians, please. Let me show you another verse here. Chapter number 5 of 2 Corinthians, verse 15. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Amen. You don't live for yourself, amen. We got a lot of times people living for themselves. It's not about you, it's about him. You know, if you lose yourself in him, God will give you purpose and meaning to your life. You know, and, and so many times we, we're, 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 so in, we're so bombarded with people having self-esteem and gurus and trying to help you out, make you feel better. What makes You see, God made us a spiritual being. You know, we have, um, when it, when it about it, we have intellect, we have a will, and we have emotions. And those three things must be in sync, and the only way they can be in sync the right way is if you're living and you're right with God, you know? And that's the problem we're missing, that component. Well, we're, we're doing our, we're taking God back out. Did you all see the other day that, that uh, pastor that was in Iran for a couple of years? He was in the Oval Office. You all saw it or not. He was praying with the President of the United States, Amen. He had his hand on him, and he was praying with him, amen? You know what I'm saying? And uh, I, I, I do like the fact how our country is beginning to come around to where uh, when it comes down that, that God, we need to bring God back. See, we kicked God out in the 60s. We kicked him out, amen, you know? And now that's why we're unraveling. I mean, you can't, you can't have a family, you can't have a church, you can't have a society if God's not involved in it. God, God's got to be involved in this, okay? So we see here, I'm committed to missions because that our Savior was his coming to suffer. When he suffered, he gave his life for us, all right? And, 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 and I'm still, that still baffles me that him being the just God gave his life for the unjust people, amen? What, what, a, what a concept that he did. He came and he, 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 was, he was the innocent Dying for the guilty. You know, he took our place. He was the Lamb of God. You know, what a blessing that was. So I'm, we see here, the reason why I'm committed to missions is number one, the commitment of our Savior, and he, his commitment to suffering. Number two, his concern for souls. You know, what, what, a, what a blessing. He loved people. Turn to chapter number nine of Matthew, please. Why am I committed to missions? Chapter number 9, I read this earlier early on in the week. It says here, And when Jesus was about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people, 
But when he saw the multitudes, notice this here, he was moved with compassion on them. Wow, his concern for souls, amen? You know? Uh, what a blessing, his concern for souls. And then we also see his compassion, amen? He had compassion for all sinners. We showed you that this morning. Now, I didn't read this verse this morning in John chapter 4 because I was going to read it tonight. So turn back over to John chapter 4. Let me show you this verse I wanted to read to you tonight out of that chapter, John chapter number 4. John chapter number 4, and look at verse number um, 35. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And Jesus was getting ready to harvest a lot of souls out of Samaria, amen? That's what he did there. What a blessing it was, okay? All right? And then, you know what, also, too, the reason why I'm committed to missions, because our Savior is committed to all the things he did, but also he commissions his servants. God calls people to preach, amen? God calls people to preach. And God's still calling today. God's still calling today. He's calling men to go and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And God help us understand that, and some people say this, well, I, I volunteered to preach the gospel. And I understand that. But volunteering is different than a call of God upon your life, amen? If you volunteer, you could unvolunteer, amen, okay? But if God's called you to preach the gospel, that's a different ballgame because that's God Almighty putting an a, a overwhelming burden and a call upon your life to where if you don't do it, Paul says, woe is me if I preach not the gospel, amen, okay? I mean, I don't think you should ever feel, don't feel sorry for me because I'm a preacher, amen. I enjoy what I'm doing, amen. All right? Now, I'm not saying you can't pray for me like I hope you do. I can't, I'm not saying you can't do things, not saying that at all. What I am saying is don't feel sorry for me because I love preaching the Bible, amen. You know? And I tell you sometimes, um, I don't always love preaching the messages God gives me because I know sometimes when I'm preaching up there, people down here, they ain't going to like what I'm going to say. I know that, amen. They ain't going to like it, amen. So I got a choice to do. I either going to please him or please y'all, amen. And many times ago, I told you I'm going to please him, amen. I'll, I'll give you another old way. I'll give you another hillbilly way. Sometimes, the other day I gave you the umbrella illustration, but now I'll give you another illustration, amen. Some people, when they go to church, they come to church with a shovel, not a pick, but a shovel. And they hear the preaching of the word of God, and they say, on back, on back, amen. They on back it, amen. They on back it. You know what I'm saying? You know, they don't want it for themselves, amen. It's on back, amen. You know? And uh, there is a big difference from being under the word of God than being in the word of God for yourself, amen? And a lot of times, when you come to church, you're under the word of God. You're preached, the Bible's being preached, amen? But oh, what a difference if you'll take the Bible and get it in for yourself, amen? So I'm committed to mission number one because of the commitment of my Savior, amen? You know, he called those 11 disciples and commissioned them to establish churches because of his commitment to missions, amen? So we see here, first of all, I'm committed to missions because of the commitment of my Savior. Number two, I want you to see here, because of the commandments in the Scriptures. I'm committed to missions because of the commandments in the Scriptures. Open your Bible to chapter 28 of Matthew. Chapter 28 of Matthew. Look at verse 28, verse, chapter 28 of Matthew, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me and in heaven and in earth. You know, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things, whatsoever I commanded you, and lo, I am with you all way, even unto the end of the world. Now, many, many years ago, I heard a preacher preach this message, Pastor, and boy, it really sunk into me when he said this. Okay, 
The Bible says in verse number 19, go. Okay? But also, if we don't go. So God says for us to go into all the world. So if we don't go into all the world, look down there in verse number 20. If we don't go, there ain't no low. And low, I'm with you always. No go, no low. Amen? So I don't know about you. I want God to low with me always, don't you? Amen? So I want to go ahead and go. Amen? And I want to give the gospel, tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. And so no go, no low. Okay? All right? So we see here, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's over in chapter Mark, chapter number 16. Okay? All right? Turn over there to um, John chapter 20, please. John chapter 20. Verse 21 says this, Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. God help us to understand that, that God's about that. So when it comes to this issue of uh, being committed to missions, I'm committed because of the commitment of my Savior, number one. Number two, the commandments in the Scriptures. Our ministry should be one to win souls, baptize, baptize the saints, and to teach them to serve, amen? You see, I think it's a, it's a big job to get folks, when they get saved, that's just the beginning of their Christian life. And then they got to get involved, okay? All right? And by the way, when you come to church, we're not here to make you feel good. We're make, here to get you right with God, amen? So you can serve the Lord, amen? I mean, this church doesn't operate by the pastor and his family. It takes many people to help this thing go, amen? Okay? And I, I, I'm for one of this saying... Many hands make light work, amen? You know what I'm saying, you know? And the job of the preacher is to get you prepared for the work of the ministry, the Bible says. That's the job of the preacher is. So our ministry is to do those things. Number two, our, mini, our mission is every person in the world to get hear the gospel in every place. Every person and every place, okay? All right? Our methodology is, go back to Acts chapter number one, please. Acts chapter number one, please. This is kind of interesting here. Verse number 8, Acts chapter 1. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall witness unto me in both. In, it says the word both there. We have an obligation to do both. To preach the gospel right here, but also preach the gospel in the regions beyond. How can we do both? I mean, I'm right here, preacher. I'm in New Dakota. How can I be in China or Japan or, I mean, other parts of Japan? Or how can I be in South Africa? How can I, how can I be over there? Well, you, you're right here locally, and God has given us missionaries to accomplish the, that both. Amen? So we have, to, we have to do both. So our methodology is, is do it right here and do it in the regions beyond us. Amen? Okay? Give the gospel everywhere we can. Okay? Our ministry of winning souls, baptizing the saints, and teaching them to serve is our mission to every person and to every place. It is to be done both here at home and the rest of the world at the same time. Wow. What an obligation. Amen. It is impossible to do this unless you are committed to missions. You can't, you can't fulfill that, that responsibility if you're not involved in missions yourself. Amen. One guy said this here, this is the only methodology that is commanded to be done in the Scriptures. Okay. Both, there in chapter 1, Acts, verse number 8. Both, okay? That's so important, all right? So we see here, the reason why I'm committed to missions is because of my Savior, His commitment, the commandments in the Scriptures, and number three, the condition of sinners. That's why I'm committed to missions, because people are lost and they do not know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, okay? Now, by the way, people may be, people around you, they may be the nicest people, but nice people don't go to heaven. Good-looking people don't go to heaven. Saved people go to heaven, amen? All right? Okay? And I tell you, that's why it's so important for you to live for God and so forth because you don't know who you're going to impact. All right? That's why your family, your family and your loved ones, you know, your own children one day, if you don't have no children, be praying. I, we began to pray for our children before we even had them. We said, Lord, Pray our children will get saved. Amen? You know? And uh, all five of my children are saved. My three daughter-in-laws are saved. Amen? You know? 
And uh, what a blessing on that, you know. Um, now I, I got my grandson. I'm praying for him, for Eli to get saved. He turned one year on Friday, you know. And his mom and daddy, they take him to church all the time, amen. You know, they're, they're, they're in church all the time. My son's assistant pastor there in Delaware. And so what I'm trying to say is it's important that when it comes down to that, hey, I'm glad that the, we see the commandment in the scriptures. We've got to be committed to missions, amen. So that commitment you made this morning, let me encourage you to follow through, to ask God to work things out and so forth, okay, in your life, okay? Number three, the condition of sinners. Open your Bible to Acts chapter 26. Acts 26, look at verse number 15. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I do appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. Verse number 18. To open their eyes and to turn on them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Verse 19 says this, Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and of Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. Okay? Um, then there, turn there to verse number um, 25. But he said unto I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of these things, before whom I also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for this thing was not done in a corner. Verse 27, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, listen here, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. So sad, isn't it? Almost, Agrippa says that. Almost, he says that. Verse 28, Verse 29, then Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear my this day were both almost and all together such as I accept these bonds. He said, I wish everybody that was hearing me right now was not almost, but they were saved, amen. You know, that's what you have to understand. People here in your, your coda, they need to hear the gospel, amen. They need to, you know, everybody on that base, everyone around the church and so forth. That's why it's important. I mean, every three or four months, we do some big outreach to reach people with the gospel, amen? That's what it's all about, amen? And just think, God can use you to bring someone to Jesus, amen? You know? And you can't tell me right now, when you go to work this week, people you work with, they got problems. They got needs, amen? And I know you have to be careful how you do all that stuff and talk to them. You know, but it's, it's amazing. They'll come in and talk about what they do over the weekend, you know, about what's going on and how the things they do on God, the things they do. So when you get a chance, opportunity, tell them about Jesus, amen. You know, I remember when I was in the Air Force, they used to walk in. Man, I had a great time on Friday night. I got so wasted. They said all the stuff, you know, and I got tired of hearing them say that. So what I would do on Monday morning when they would come in and say that stuff, I said, man, I had a great time on Sunday. I was in church on Sunday. We baptized people. People got saved, amen. amen. After a while, guess what? They never come and told me no more what they were doing, amen. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm just trying to say is that give the people the gospel and, and, and pray about that, okay? Paul, you know, I'm committed to missions because of the condition of sinners, the world is large, over 7 billion. The world is lost, and the world is longing for someone to tell them about the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I am committed to missions because of the commitment of my Savior, because of the commandment in the Scriptures, number two, and because of the condition of sinners. You know, people are lost, you know. And, and I know sometimes, I know sometimes that if we're not careful, we won't look at people as God looks at them. There's two types of people in this world. They're saved and they're lost, one or the other. They're either in the family of God 
or they're not in the family of God. Amen? Okay? All right? You know, and so, um, and, and sometimes I think people don't understand that that's the way God breaks it down. You know? So that's why it's important that, hey, this morning when you made that commitment to give the missions, realize it, that you're going to change someone's eternal destiny. You know? And, and not only God using you, but all the missionaries you all support, that's credit on your account. Amen? That's a blessing on you that you get to take part of as far as that goes, okay? All right? So the Lord is looking for some preachers and some people who are committed to missions. I'm committed to missions because of the commitment of my Savior and the commandment of the Scriptures and the condition of sinners. I'm committed to the ministry of soul winning, baptizing them and teaching them and showing them what the Bible says and so forth. And by the way, it's a blessing too. When folks start learning what the Bible says, it begins to change their behavior. Because you know why? I change their belief. See, when a person believes, that's how they behave. If a man thinks he came from a monkey, he's going to act like that, amen? You know what I'm saying? But if you believe you were created by God Almighty, all right, and you were not an accident, you know, you were not a second thought, but God, by divine creation, made you, Wow, what a difference, in how, that, how you look and how you, how you behave. You know what I'm saying? You know? And so God help us, okay? Every person in every place at the same time need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, okay? Faith Promise Missions Program in your church, it needs to be something that it's a, it's a blessing to be a part of, and you can get involved, okay? You're investing for eternity, okay? And by the way, they are eternal dividends, amen? Eternal dividends, okay? All right. If as a Christian tonight you are not winning souls, praying and giving that the world might be one to Christ, you are not committed to missions. So what are you going to do about it? Get involved. When you go out soul winning and you knock on doors and you share the gospel with somebody and so forth, hey, let me encourage you to give the gospel to people. Share with that, okay? Be committed to missions. All right, you know? And, uh, and I, I tell you... Um, um, when I, was, when I was sitting there before I got behind the pulpit and started preaching some 27, 28 years ago, you'll never know the, the things that go on with your pastor and his family behind the scenes. And I tell you, they need, they need a lot of people in the church to uplift them and encourage them and hold them up and be beside them and say, hey, preacher, we're standing with you, amen. We're there with you. We're to help you out and so forth, you know. Whenever you have a function and so forth, everyone joins hands together. Last night after dinner, it was a blessing. When we got done eating, everyone pitched in, amen. Everyone got together and so forth, and what a blessing it is. You know what I'm saying? What I'm trying to say is, is that be committed to missions. Let God have his way in your life, okay? And let's, let's see what God does this year at Yakota Baptist Church, amen. Let's all stand to our feet. Please, heavy head bowed, every eye closed. Let me encourage you to be committed to missions. Be committed to missions, amen? Let God have his way in your life.